In the first movie, we went over the basic connections to the Dopfer A106-6 expander type filter. And for those demonstrations, we focused on the four-pole low-pass filter, which has a nice, smooth Curtis sound. Turn on the resonance a little bit here. Really nice sound. In the next few movies, we're going to compare those different filter modes that it offers. I'm going to pull my voltage controlled Q connection for now because I'm not going to be using that. And I have been using two oscillators, the sawtooth from the Mother 32 and a square wave from the Disting. Open it up here. So that it's easier to see what's going on in my spectrograph display, I'm going to take the Disting square wave out of the mix. And now we have that very typical sawtooth type pattern where every harmonic is present falling off in a pretty much straight line from the fundamental to the highest harmonic. For some of these tests, I'll also be using white noise from the Disting. Turn down the Moog, turn up the white noise. Because that makes it easier to see exactly what's happening in the spectrograph. For example, I'll pull down the filter cutoff. Now you can see the steep slope of that four pole or 24 dB per octave filter. And you can easily see also the humps caused by resonance. There's that little peak particularly as we sweep it up and down. Turn resonance down for now, turn noise down for now, and go back to the Moog's sawtooth wave. The XP filter gives you one, two, three, and four pole variations on the low pass filter. Each one has excessively steeper slopes and allows more high harmonics through. This is the four pole filter. You see the spectrograph there. As I switch over to three pole, the sound is slightly brighter, and you see some higher harmonics jump up a little bit in the spectrograph display. Four pole, three pole. To hear the two and one pole, you need to change to this lower connection. There's the two pole filter. Brighter again, more harmonics present. Then here's the one pole filter. Two pole. Three pole. And finally, four pole. Now the filter groups on the left side of the switch do not go into full oscillation at high resonance. The ones on the right side do. So if I go to three pole mode, which is 18 dB per octave, crank up the resonance, we still have a very resonant sound. As I pull out the input, you'll hear no sound because we no longer have an audio input. But if I switch to four pole mode, you'll see it has much stronger resonance. As I pull out the input signal, there is the oscillation just from the filter. And that drop off in pitch was due to the release stage of the envelope driving the filter's cutoff. Now, an interesting thing about resonance inside the XP filter is that it acts kind of like soft sync in an oscillator. It tries to lock onto a harmonic of the incoming signal. For example, here is just the pure resonance by itself. And I can tune it to whatever pitch I want. But as I start to turn up the input signal, you'll hear it start to waver and then jump to a harmonic of that input signal. A little unstable there. More unstable. And now let's jump to a different pitch to lock in to the oncoming oscillator. some fun purposely tuning that instability. And it's more obvious if I slow down my filter and do a long filter sweep into that tuning. So 
if you like to do drone type work where you have some interest in instability in the sound, that's something you can play with by balancing the input level off against the tuning for the resonance. Now again, the three pole and one pole options do not have that effect. They're always going to be in tune, no instability compared to the two and four pole. Now to reinforce exactly what's happening with the harmonics, let's briefly look at noise for this filter. Turn my level back up, turn the sawtooth down. Whoops, keep going for the wrong input there. Turn my noise level up. There's noise, particularly after the initial attack. Nice intermediate cutoff there. You see the roll off in the high frequencies for the four pole filter. Here's the three pole. You see that curve move to the right as more harmonics get through. One pole, which is very bright, you'd see it extend all the way off the right end of the chart, which is at 10,000 hertz. And finally, a two pole filter, where a lot more of those high harmonics get attenuated. Big difference between the one pole sound and two pole. Now the XP filter gives you three different options for the high pass filter, one pole, two pole, or three pole. And they're all on the left side of the filter group switch, which means none of these will go into full oscillation at high resonance settings. We'll look at those with noise again, because it's easy to see what's going on with harmonics. There's the one pole high pass. I'll speed up my envelope so it settles in more quickly. You see the curve where the low frequencies are being rolled off. I'll lower the cutoff a little bit. And the higher harmonics from being allowed through unmolested. Here's the two pole. You'll notice in the spectrograph, more of the low frequencies are being rolled off. And finally three pole. It's subjectively brighter sounding for two reasons. One, the three pole output has a much higher signal level than the one and two pole outputs. This is where we might want to use our amplifying mixer to go ahead and compensate for that drop off in level. And two, it has a brighter balance overall. One pole, three pole. More low harmonics are missing. I'll take the noise out of the equation, bring our sawtooth back. Tune this down a little bit. Maybe bring our square back in for some thickness. I prefer fast envelopes for high pass sounds. And personally, I like inverted envelopes when I'm using a high pass filter. Now, unfortunately, the input control for control voltage 2 for the cutoff frequency is not an inverting attenuator on the doper modules. So to get an inverted envelope, you either need to run it through an inverter, such as one of the channels of levitate, or fortunately, the roll-in envelope has inverted options. By doing this, the initial attack will drive the cutoff down, which means low harmonics to get through to give a more bassy punch, and then the filter will rise up to let fewer low harmonics through and have a thinner sustain sound. So you hear more of a bass punch at the onset of a note. And it goes to a thinner sound for the sustain. And of course you can use resonance with this as well. Next, let's look at the bandpass options, B, which also include the combination low and high pass modes. Those are asymmetrical variations on your typical bandpass filter. Mm -hmm. 